All right. Hey, good morning, brothers and sisters. Today is February 20th, 2022. And I have a very encouraging and extremely interesting dream that I want to share with you guys. Uh, okay. I pray that I wrote this all down and I pray that I explain this in, in the right order. And I just pray that you guys understand. I hope I don't get rambling on or get ahead of myself here. But there's so much in this dream that I find, that I believe you guys will find extremely encouraging. All right, so I'm going to start at the beginning here, maybe with a little backdrop. Okay, so both of my husband's parents passed away. And I did ask his permission to share this dream because... It did involve his parents, and he said yes. So, all right, so years ago, Brian's, both of Brian's parents have passed away. All right, now, I didn't really get to know his dad real well because we had only been married a couple of years when he passed. So, first of all, I have never dreamed of him, never. So, I went, to, just so you know, this dream was February 18th. I've, I've prayed, wanted to wait a couple of days and pray on this and just get my head straight on things and, and just really just wait for the leading of the Lord, which I got that today. So, I had this dream on February 18th. Now, in this dream, we were like in an open space, like outdoor open space. Everything was very white, very bright. And like I said, I, I didn't really get to know his dad real well. So what I saw was Brian and I were there, and we I saw his father walk in. And he was really excited. Now, in this dream, he didn't wear glasses. And he had on his the hat that he always wore. And, of course, he looked young. And when he came in, he was really happy. And he what he said to us is he's like, how long has it been since we've seen each other? And Brian wasn't sure, and I said, well, it's got to be over 20 years because the kids were only two and four around that age. So in actuality, it's been like 27, 28 years, I think. So after he said that, I noticed that he was so excited to talk to Brian. He just had so many questions for him. And the questions were like, so what did you do with your life what what happened here? What you know? What was it like? What did you go through? What did you do? He just wanted to know everything that happened in Brian's life since he died, and he was just so excited to talk to him. So they were just talking and talking, and then the scene changed for just a brief moment, and I saw Brian standing in a doorway, and he was looking for something, like looking up in the sky, watching. And I walked up behind him, and I heard a voice say, your mom will be here in 25 minutes. Now, this is his mom, Danita. He, the voice said, she will be here in 25 minutes, and she will live close to you. So then the scene went right back to the first one. And again, Brian's dad was still talking to him, asking him questions. And I saw his mom walk in. And uh, just like his dad, she looked very young. She looked so pretty. She was dressed up. She had a really pretty skirt on and uh, a blouse. And she came in and she sat down because there was like two couches sitting like in an L-shaped. And we were just talking. But I noticed that where we were, it felt like we were on earth because there were some flies that were, you know, like, you know, in the summer when you sit outside, you have mosquitoes and stuff like that. I just noticed and, and had this feeling that we were uh, outside, you know, like possibly on earth. And this is the one thing I wasn't sure. So I told Brian about this when I woke up and he's like, well, Rhonda, we're going to be, when we, when we get raptured, we're going to be, uh, in paradise or wherever it is we go, but only for seven years, because remember at the end of that time, we will be coming back to earth with Christ because he's coming back to reign for a thousand years. So we will be back on the earth. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I, I didn't think of that. Okay, so now this is making sense to me. Okay, so I'm going to turn the page here because I'm trying to write everything in order here. So after Brian explained that to me, I was like, okay, well, that, that makes sense. So that was pretty much all of the scene, just the fact that he was so excited to see his son. And he was asking him all these questions. I saw his mom, mom and it was so vivid, you guys. It was so real. And 
I didn't wake up because I had to go to the bathroom or anything. The Lord just woke me up. Now, lately I've been taking my phone in at night because sometimes I like listening to the sound of the wind or the rain when I sleep at night because it's so quiet. And I thought, gosh, what time is it? So I reached over and looked at my my phone and it said 1144 exactly. I don't know how long I had laid there. I have a feeling that I laid there for a little bit before I looked at the clock, but for some reason I just felt the need to to look at the clock and I I never do this, never. So I noticed it was 1144 and that number just struck me as um make sure you remember that. So before I go into what that number means, let me I want to go over a few things that make this dream so interesting to me. Now, first of all, Brian's, this is what's interesting, is Brian's parents, they were married August 26, 1966. That is my birthday. I was born August 26, 1966. So we, we always thought that was so awesome. Now, another thing I want to mention is I had this on February 18th. Now, on February 18th, is the day that my brother died. And he has been gone now 33 years. Another interesting fact is, I've told you guys, the ones that have been following me, that there's a certain family that the Lord made note to me were symb was symbolic of the church. This family, uh, right from the beginning, the Lord showed me that this family, when I dream about them, is symbolic of the church. Now, what I find interesting is their only son... Their only son died the exact same day, same exact year as my, my brother. So, 33 years. Okay. Another neat thing is on April, Brian and I will be married 33 years. Now, I want to tell you about the next scene that I had that night. Now, I had all this before I woke up. And this is a confirmation to me that when we were visiting with his parents, that it was on earth. Now, in this scene, I was at my father's house. Now, I knew that this was my childhood home, and I knew this was symbolic of my father in heaven's house. Now, when I was there, I saw mobile homes there. I don't know how many I saw. I just, when I was pulling in with my mobile home, I saw others there. And I know that mobile homes is symbolic of a temporary situation, okay? It's a temporary place. So I, as my mobile home was being pulled into my father's house, I saw a man, I knew his name was Chris, and he was dressed in military. I knew he was a soldier and fighting in the war, and he had just arrived. He had just arrived in heaven. Okay, now another thing I saw in this dream was I saw my uncle. Now, he just passed away a couple of years ago, and I saw him. The next thing I saw is I was in a car with Brian, and Brian was driving really fast because we knew that we didn't have a lot of time and we had to get a lot of stuff done. Now, let me flip over to the last page here of notes that I wrote down. So, I told you the interesting parts about the how many times the number 33 is connected with me and my family and the church. We all know that when Jesus was 33, he was crucified and he was resurrected. Okay, so I told you guys that I woke up at 1144. And like I told my husband, I said, I'm, I'm not one that is given numbers and stuff, but I know that everything God shows me, it, there's a reason for it. I may not understand it at that time or, or, or maybe I'll understand it later, but I know that everything, there's no coincidences with God. So when I looked up 1144 this morning, I saw there's two different meanings to that. The one meaning is the son of the right hand. The second meaning for 1144 is of uncertain affinity or a teardrop. So, of course, I went to the Bible. And the biblical meaning of affinity is a relationship by marriage. And in Luke twenty two sixty nine, 69, it says, but from now on, the son of man will be seated at the right hand of God. Now, there's four places in the Bible that use the word affinity uh, in connection to what I just explained. So I'll go over it real quick. 
Uh, in Chronicles 18.1, it says, Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance, and he joined affinity with Ahab. So this is talking about a commitment, a uh, relationship. In Ezra 9.14, it says, Should we again break thy commandments and join in affinity with people of these abominations? Again, it's talking about a relationship. Now, in Daniel eleven six it says, And after the course of years they shall join affinity, and the king's daughter of the south shall come to the king of the north to make equitable conditions. But she shall not retain the strength of her arm, neither shall he stand nor his arm, and she shall be given up, she and they that brought her, and he that begat her, and he that strengthened her in those times. So we got Daniel Ezra Chronicles, oh, and I forgot, 1 Kings 3, 1. It says, And Solomon made affinity with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had made an end of building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall of Jerusalem around about. So there's four places in the Bible that mention affinity that all connect to marriage and relationship commitment. So... I just found this dream extremely interesting, especially the part of his dad, because I have never, through all these years, have ever dreamed about him. I've seen his mom several times. And the other interesting part is the number 25. I don't think it literally means 25 minutes, or I don't think it's talking about a time. 25 in the Bible, um, 20 is redemption, and 5 is um, grace, so we're talking about grace multiplied here. It's talking about redemption and grace multiplied. And the first thing I thought of was we are living in the age of grace, but we know that that age of grace is going to end soon. And those that do not belong to the Lord, that don't have a relationship with him, that aren't saved, will have to go through the tribulation and some will have to give their lives for the Lord. Right now, it's a free gift. It's a free gift to come to the Lord and to be saved and to have a relationship with him. So, as always, I say this every time. Please take this to the Lord, you guys. Please pray on this. I am sharing this because there's just no way I, I could not. Uh, only if the Lord told me no. And that's why I purposely waited because, boy, the first day I wanted to share this. But I thought, no, I felt led to just wait at first, I wanted to make sure it was okay with my husband that I shared that. And I just felt led to wait. So I'm glad that I did because there's some things I wouldn't have added if I hadn't of like the numbers and stuff that he uh, led me to look up today. So that's it, you guys. That is the dream. I pray that I spoke well and that you guys uh, can understand everything that I was uh, talking about. So... I pray for each and every one of you guys. I truly do. Lord, I just ask you to please bless everyone who hears my voice. Please bless them mightily. Bless their families. Keep them safe. Stay strong in the Lord, you guys. Um, with all these dreams that the Lord has been given, you know, not, to, not just me, but everybody, um, clear warnings are coming that judgment is coming, which is, I believe we're talking about the, the tribulation. I believe... I truly feel and, and believe that it could be this year. I'm thinking around the fall time, only because with all the the studies that my husband has done, that's what he feels that it has to be in the fall. But you know what? Like God told me, it's a mystery, and it'll happen when it happens. So we are to, to continue to, to work. We are not to just sit around or get scared. Do not fear. The Lord told us, do not fear. He already, he's already warned us what's coming, what's going to happen, and to just stay strong in the Lord. And we may face uh, uh, some stuff before we go, but, you know, praise the Lord. He warns us ahead of time. Just stay strong in him. And um, that's what I, I pray. I ask the Lord if, you know, whatever happens, please help me to be quick to forgive and to pray for those that do come against us and pray for our families. Um, I guess that's all I can really think of to say today, you guys. I just pray you have a wonderful day. 
Uh, if you don't know Jesus, please, please call out to him today. Please ask him into your heart. If you're not sure, just ask him to show you the truth. And he will show you the truth. Um, gosh, I've just, the Lord has just taught me so much. He's continuing to, to just heal me and, and restore me and give me wisdom. I am just so thankful, you know, for this journey. I, I truly am. And so I love you guys. I truly do. I will continue to pray for you. If I get anything else, I'll let you know.